All right, Off Grid Stores here back with another video. And in the last video, we talked about pretty much finding out how many amps are going into your battery bank, if it's 12 volts, if it's 24 volts, and picking the right amount of solar for it. And we found out that this 40 amp solar charge controller from Rich Solar can only accept 550 watts at 12 volts. And I said probably end up with 500 if you stayed at 12 volts, and then 1100 at 24 volts. Even though we figured that out in the last video, I figured it would make more sense to make another video about it, is first off, like I said, you're probably not gonna find 110 watt solar panels. And also, I forgot to mention, be sure to like this video to get it out to anybody else that's wondering these things. Helps out with the algorithm a lot. So let's look right here. Like I said, you're probably not gonna find 110 watt panels. You could, maybe they're not you know, from the supplier that you want, or you know, let's just say that you're only gonna find five 100 watt panels. So you have one, two, three, four, five, all in series. Now let's go ahead and look at a little bit more specifics of this system. All right, so there are more things to take into consideration. So say that you are dead set on this charge controller and you're dead set on a 12 volt battery bank. Maybe you only have one battery. So then you're dead set on it because you can't do 24 volts because you only have one 12 volt battery. Now there are some other things to take into consideration here. There is a maximum solar input voltage that this actual charge controller can handle. And this is, you know, pretty much all of your solar panels, how many volts. And there's the max PV input short circuit current. So that's 50 amps. You're probably not gonna hit 50 amps. The biggest issue here is staying below the 100 volts DC. And it is even more interesting if we look right here, it says max solar input voltage. You will see that it's 100 volts at 25 C because as temperature gets colder, your solar panels will put out more power. So it says at negative 25, the most you can have is 90 volts altogether. Most people probably won't be at negative 25, I'm assuming, but let's just say, let's just keep it at keeping it below 100 and showing you that it's kind of challenging to do so with this actual system. So if we come here and we look at if I go to solar panels on our website, we'll go to rigid and then we'll go to 100 watt, like I said, we were gonna find. And we wanted five of them, 500 watts altogether. And we scroll down, you always wanna be calculating off of the open circuit voltage. And we wanted five, right? Cause we wanted 500 watts, so we could have 550. So we want five, but we do 22.8 times five. When you wire them in series, it's gonna be 114 volts. That's too high. It's not gonna be good for the solar charge controller. There will be issues you'll probably just end up burning it out and breaking it. So you'd probably only be able to get four. If we do 22.8 times four in series, you'd be at 91.2. Even that is above the max for the negative 25C, but I'm assuming most people won't be at negative 25C. So four in series should be fine. Remember, solar panels in series, you're adding together the voltage. How are we gonna go about this? Well, then again, you could probably start looking for other size panels. So if we did 200 watt panels, again, remember it said the max that we can input at 12 volt battery bank is only 550 watts. So then at 550 watts, we couldn't even do three. We could only again do two 200 watt panels because that's 400 watts if we add another one that's 600, we're over it. So really you'd have to find something in between, which is definitely less popular, but Rich Solar does have a 150 watt solar panel. So if we scroll down here, we will see that pretty much the same open circuit voltage, I believe. It's 22.7, it's actually lower by a little bit. And let's just make sure that these are accurate on our website. Yeah, it's 22.7. So this would probably be what we wanted to do. With five solar panels, 500 watts, you can't do three in, in series, two in series, and then put those in parallel. That's not gonna work. You need to have equal amounts on each parallel string. So really what we could only do here is use three 150 watts and then try to get it, you know, cause four 150, watts times four panels, that's 600, that's over it. So if we do three times 150, we're at 450. At least we're getting 50 watts more than the 400 watts that we'd have to end up going with if we use 100 watt panels. So if we look right here again, 22.7 times three, because they're gonna be in series, is only 68.1. You're in a much safer range. Say it got extremely cold, you're still much below the, the 90 volts that it says for when it's really cold. And you're pretty much fitting this entire bill. So without going on too much about this topic, you basically need to keep it within the range so that you're not destroying your batteries. You're not, you're not charging it at too much for the max output of this solar charge controller. And you also need to make sure that you're not putting in too much voltage or too much power into the actual solar charge controller to end up damaging it. So you need to really keep those two things in mind. In my opinion, what's the moral of the story? 
the easiest way to go about it would just be picking the next size up solar charge controller. But again, the biggest difference is that that's $200 more. But the main thing here is if you get this 40 amp system or 40 amp solar charge controller, the only real way to expand in the future is going to be bumping it up to 24 volts or pretty much getting a larger charge controller. Because if you just bump up the voltage of your bank, then you could, in fact, add a lot more solar panels, a lot more easily. And then at that point, you'd be pretty much good to go. Let's say this was at 24 volts. We want to use 200 watt panels, so we'd probably keep it at 1000 watts altogether. We'll use this one for an example. So we would do five in series. Again, it's 24.3. Again, we'd be too high. So we kind of need to find another way to go about this, which again would be possibly doing just a whole different setup in general, or in reality is getting a higher solar charge controller, a larger solar charge controller, because you'd be doing math all day, trying to figure this stuff out. You could go with trying to find a larger panel, maybe like a 250 or something like that. Or if you found a 250, then you could just do four 250 watts. Again, it's up to you. In reality, I would spend more money to get a larger solar charge controller, just in order to make sure that you don't have to keep doing math back and forth nonstop as to what's gonna work and what's not going to work. So hopefully this video made sense. And if you liked it, be sure to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and hopefully I'm helping you out with your solar decisions down the road. And keep an eye out, we will be just putting together, we already have kits for solar generators, but we will just be putting together kits that are guaranteed to work with solar panels, charge controllers, batteries included, inverters and all the wires and everything like that. So keep an eye out for that. If you're a first time customer also, you'll get 10% off on your first purchase. Thank you.